You're gonna love this. Come on in. So slab leaks are a big deal in Texas. And especially here in North Texas, when we go from dry to wet, foundations move around, we're on black soil. What we've got is, my plumber called me yesterday and said, hey look, we've got a lot of fittings under this house that the fittings are broken. And I wanted to look at it because when I worked in industrial, I realized and learned early, you can't put fittings in a bind because that will cause problems. So whenever he told me about that, I knew I wanted to come out here, get up under the house and look at it to see what kind of problems there were. You know, this house was built in the mid eighties and that's when we went from cast iron to PVC and plumbers who had been installing cast iron knew you really didn't have to support it super great. It didn't have to be perfect, but PVC is a little bit different. You need that continuous bedding. If not, when you throw the earth on top of it and start packing it down, it'll put those fittings in a bind. And unfortunately, I'm afraid that may be what happened here. So let's check it out. All right, so we've had problems in the front and the back. So literally what we're doing is we've dug a hole here. We've replaced the two-way clean outs to give us the best testing possibilities. And once we replace them, we realized we've got problems everywhere else. Now, welcome to Texas, we've got mosquitoes. So what we're gonna do is we know we're good here. We've got a tunnel in the back. We're gonna go under there because that's where the fittings are. But to be honest, a good sewer water test has to start with the two-way clean outs. And when I say sewer water test, of course the water's on the hose bib, but when we do a sewer test, you've really gotta have a good two-way clean out in the front. That way you can put that test ball right between them and you can look down this side and make sure no water is going out past your test ball. And on this side, you can actually fill it up to the slab level so you know everything's good. Let's walk around back and see what we got. All right, so as I said, this is around back. So what we got is he had to pull part of his deck. So he's got a deck on his patio and we gave him a price to do it. But he said, look, I'd rather do that myself, which we're good with that. Anything we can create for our customers to help them save money. So he removed the deck, stacked it up over here. We dug a hole and tunneled up under, and you won't believe some of the stuff that my plumber found, but we're gonna climb under there and look at it now. As you see, they've got the area roped off. He removed the deck here. The dig crew came in, dug up under, and the bad thing is, anytime that there's just pipe laying on the ground, you know that that's not a good sign. Okay, so here we are up under a house. As you can see, we've got water lines, We've got a line going over here to a bathtub. But here's my problem, and here's what you see. We've got a break here. And the reason that we've got this break is this was not put in in a smooth situation. And what I mean is all this was in a bind. And you know that because it's pushed off center and it's pushed back this way. Now, I don't know what did that, but my thought here is that when this pipe was put in, either there wasn't a good bedding so that the pipe sat right where it's supposed to, maybe they left voids and when you backfilled it, it pushed the pipe around and it moved things around. Because this is pushed off center and I've got a couple of different problems with it. If you look at it, it's pushed over this way, but if you look at the pipe back here, it looks like it's angled over this way and I need it angled right straight at the pipe back here. This is a toilet. This is a sanitary tee going up to catch a toilet. Y'all have heard me talk about the Wisconsin's. Well, here it is. You've got a sanitary tee with a side inlet. They reduced it down to inch and a half so they could come over and catch this tub that I told you about. Here's the thing is though, this looks like it's pointing this way and I need it to go over here. This line coming out literally went over and caught the kitchen sink. When the dig crew came and dug it out, this line literally fell. It was broken here because it was in a bind and it was broken down there. And you can tell where the pipe set right here along this line. It's just, it's pointing this way and I need it over this way. There's something wrong with the way it was installed because it was put into where this fitting was continuously in a bind. Now this fitting has been here for about 30 years, maybe 40 years. This house was probably built early to mid eighties. And to be honest, I mean, look, the copper lines look great. There's plenty of sand here. A lot of it was good, but from what we know about the front and here, anytime there's a break on a PVC fitting, you know something was not installed properly. When the fittings are installed, everything should be stress-free. It should literally just set right where it is. Everything goes together. It's not in a bind. It's not pushing. It's not pulling. It's not tweaking. Because over the course of years, you put this in such a bind, eventually it's going to break. And it looks like it broke here. It looks like it broke here and it looks like it broke on the other end right under the kitchen sink. So all this raw sewage has been going up under this house 
for God only knows how long. So as you can see, this looks like a break. Remember, I said the pipe needs to have been installed stress-free. Here's the issue is, if this pushes down, it's gonna cause this to break, and that's exactly what happened. What caused it, how long has this been, I have no idea, but as you can tell, we had to chip out a little concrete to get up in here. We're gonna have to cut the pipe, put on a new 45 or a long sweep 90 so that we can get things back and hopefully get it lined up and get it installed in a good way. So as you can see, we have another break here. Now what this is from, this is again, I mean, they're stress fractures. Somehow this was not put in good. It wasn't supported properly where it wouldn't move. So if you're a plumber, think about this. When you're doing rough ends, make sure you have a continuous, solid, steady bed under your pipe. Should come up just over halfway, pack it in tight, because when they come in and put the dirt in on top and start filling it in, you don't want places that the pipe can move and put your fittings in a bind. That's what's gonna happen. So as you can see back over there, we have another stress break. Guys, it doesn't take a lot to do this right. What it takes is a continuous bed along the bottom of your pipe. You wanna make sure you come up around it. You see there's plenty of sand around here. You would think that it could have been done right. Somehow, somewhere along the way, something happened. A pressure, a weight, probably from the earth, from the backfilling and things like that. Maybe from the concrete, we're under a beam here. Something moved it around, and as you can see on that separation there, I mean, it pulled apart about an inch and a half. That's a lot of stress to put on a fitting or a joint for that many years. Anyway, guys, I hope that you see something about slab leaks, and man, locating them is sometimes hard, but once we find them, we've gotta come, we're probably 20 feet up under here. Not always easy, not always fun, but it's what we gotta do to make the repairs. Anyway, let me know what kind of problems have you found under a slab that had to be repaired. Whether you're a homeowner or a plumber, give me a shout. And if you've got any pictures or videos, I would love to see it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.